So I'm not sure if, okay, Aisha is back. Um, I would like to then move on to the, the second, second point in our, in our agenda. And that is um, our African Youth Envoy Ambassador, Ms. Ayachebi, to provide a warm welcome, but equally to give us a brief about the continental responses that the African Union has provided. Ayachebi, you may please join. Thank you very much, Karabu. Thank you for your leadership. Uh, no protocols at all. <laughs> um, yeah, we're, we're young people trying to play our part here and I'm really happy that we have a good turnout. So thank you all for showing up to, to this consultation and for playing your part, whatever you are in your countries. And I look forward to hear what everyone is doing and how is situation in different countries. Um, but thanks again for the um, peace ambassadors who led um, the mobilization and for you particularly, Karabu, for your leadership. So I'm going to just give um, an overview of uh, what the African Union has been doing and what's the state in Africa um, moving towards uh, really trying to have this collective response as young people and playing uh, our role as well in this um, difficult time. As of this morning, 10 a.m. Uh, Addis Ababa time, we have 47 African countries reporting a total of 5,255 cases of COVID-19, uh, 172 deaths and 371 recoveries. We have about 31 border closure in Africa and around 12 international air traffic closure. Um, in the African Union, the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, Africa CDC, is the leading um, uh, entity for the response on the pandemic. Um, is, uh, as you know, I don't know if you have interacted with Africa CDC or worked uh, with them during this period, but it's a specialized technical institution of the African Union um, supporting public health initiatives of member states. So the good thing um, in the African Union is that we started early. So as early as February, the African Union ministers of health met and agreed on a joint <clears throat> continental uh, strategy and put in place a task force. And as a result of implementing this strategy, um, there was the relief initiative, for example, that was launched by Prime Minister of Ethiopia with JACMA Foundation, distributing 1.5 million um, diagnostic test kits and over 100 tons of infection prevention and control commodities. And this week, uh, Ethiopian Airline have been distributing the equipment. It's distributed evenly to all member states, so to uh, 20,000 uh, 20, laboratory uh, diagnostic test kits and about 100,000 medical masks and other equipment. So I'm sure in many of our countries, <clears throat> this has already arrived um, and this would be helpful, but we need more. Um, and so Africa, the CDC also holds um, weekly updates with national public health institutes across Africa, post twice a day updated map and stats, which I encourage all of you to always share from the source on their social media or on their website, uh, the official information. And also Africa CDC does training. So they train hundreds of experts in prevention control, infection uh, prevention risk communication and case management and so on and so forth. Um, so they, there are about 43 laboratories from 43 countries in Africa that have participated in these trainings. And there's also an online uh, portal uh, of that uh, online course trainings and case studies and so on. Um, so the main goal now in Africa is to rapidly detect, contain and break the transmission chain, um, really break the curve. And so many of the measures have been taking, whether testing, tracing, quarantine, curfews, complete lockdowns uh, as, as in South Africa. Um, all these measures are used by government um, because preparation is so important to avoid numbers exceeding what the system can accommodate. And I think we have a big challenge um, facing us in this crisis is uh, either the denial of, of the population that this exists and people not taking it seriously, they're not disciplined to the measures, they just go about their lives, or on the other extreme, the fear to the point of panic. And so, I think we, we play a big role in being also the trusted messengers between the measures that have been um, uh, put in place by the authorities and, and government 
and uh, the collaboration of people, individual collaboration. We see less of individual collaboration, more of government enforced measures because we need to find that bridge, that trusted messengers who could communicate the information. So the, the virtual uh, AU youth consultation series with young people for us is a, um, the end goal of it is to form a collective youth response that can address these challenges. Uh, we're working closely with Africa CDC, CDC because um, they also think that it is important for young people to play a role, to be mobilized, to disseminate information, um, to engage our peers, to find those trusted messengers who can influence behavioral change in the community and to be that bridge to accelerate youth responsibility on this crisis. So um, this is the purpose of this convening and I really, really look forward to hear from you, uh, your ideas, how can we unite our efforts and play our part, especially as uh, ambassadors for peace? We need to put central um, the peace building uh, agenda in this um, pandemic as we move forward, not only now in the response, but also the post uh, crisis phase. I think you play a really key role and your thinking now and uh, building strategies and also the work you do in your community is so important. So I really look forward for us to, to work together moving forward on this uh, coronavirus response. Thank you, Aishabi. If you do have questions, please do, um, you know, place them in the chat. And, you know, um, our youth envoy has actually said really important points in terms of there are a lot of efforts that are happening and those efforts did start in February, you know, the distribution of kids, um, the establishment of the task force and all these relief initiatives. But what the African Youth CDC is then attempting to do is to ensure that indeed this is a collective effort and in making it a collective effort, you then need to include youth. And the involvement of youth then comes in where we are actively addressing the issues of denial, as mentioned by IHAB, the issues of fear to the extent of causing panic. And we are ultimately, as she said, messengers to effect collaboration. And that collaboration is youth-led and must actively involve youth beyond just ourselves. But we as youth leaders then need to be those messengers leading the way. Okay. So then, um, since we have no questions, I would like us to then move on to the third point in the agenda, which will then obviously have you guys speak, because I'd like to definitely hear from you know other young people. Um, the third point in the agenda is the briefings from the different participants relating to what is happening in your countries. What is the feel? What are the challenges? What are the best practices and lessons that you've observed within your country? Um, we're gonna do it in an orderly manner. So I'd like us to go according to the different regions so that it's organized and we're able to map it out. I'd like us to start with Central Africa. If there are any representatives from Central African countries to actually share as to what has been happening in each of the countries relating to COVID-19. Central Africa. Hi everyone. This is Maurice from Central African Republic. I stay in Cameroon and uh, in Cameroon, there have been many records of coronavirus virus disease in Cameroon and we are all right now at home because um, offices are closed and everything is shut down and what I have observed in Cameroon mainly in Yaoundé is that at all entry of many offices or administration or market everything you will find market and soap that you can wash your hands first before doing what you are coming to do. And even everything is shut down here, but at our university, University of Yaoundé Tuswa, there are 
many measures that have been put down to to face the disease and so that many people can even continue to do their activities but being very protected against the coronavirus. Thank you. Thank you, Koboza. So you speak about, you know, like the institution shutting down and markets um, being, the markets having, you know, facilities to wash your hands before you can even do anything. Thank you for that contribution. Is there, are there any other contributions from the Central African region? Okay. I will take that as no. Uh, we'd like to then move on to the next region. And that is East Africa. This is not favoritism, by the way, it's an alphabetical order. So um, East Africa, are there any reports from that side in terms of what is happening in any of the East African countries? Are there no representatives from East Africa? I'd like to then proceed. Okay, then we would like to then move to North Africa um, in terms of what has been happening within countries, countries within the region itself. Uh, just to remind you, best practices, lessons, and the challenges that the countries within North Africa have been facing during this time. Hi. You may proceed. Uh, before starting, I want to uh, ask the chat to allow me to speak in French. You may do so. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, um, my name is uh, Awad Mahjoub from Tunisia. Um, Le bilan de personnes contaminées se lève aujourd'hui en Tunisie à 362 cas, mais la propagation du virus est plus lente qu'en Asie ou en Europe. Euh, conformément aux instructions de l'Organisation mondiale de la santé, la Tunisie a commencé par l'octroi de mesures préventives et des procédures exceptionnelles dès l'apparition du premier cas. Le gouvernement prévoyait que la seule solution et la distanciation pour rompre la chaîne de transmission pour centraliser et localiser les cas. Euh, le président de la République aussi a interdit la circulation de personnes et de véhicules sur tout la, le territoire de la République, sauf pour subvenir à leurs besoins essentiels ou pour des raisons de santé urgentes. Euh, aussi au niveau international, la Tunisie a appelé de par sa qualité de membre non permanent de le Conseil de sécurité de l'ONU, à tenir une réunion d'urgence pour examiner les répercussions du coronavirus sur la sécurité et la paix internationale et les mesures qu'il pourra prendre pour, tout, euh, pour soutenir les efforts internationaux. Euh, ici en Tunisie, les autorités ont invité les gens à rester chez eux et de ne pas quitter les maisons. Les médias aussi ont joué un rôle important par le lancement euh, de publicité et euh, par la sensibilisation. Euh, en, en plus, en plus de ça, euh, les jeunes sont appelés à créer des opportunités et, de, et à s'adapter et créer des alternatives. Euh, lire, écrire, apprendre en ligne, euh, mais rester à la maison et suivre les instructions de l'Organisation mondiale de la santé. Euh, 
Pour cela, les jeunes partagent les opportunités et les plateformes, euh, aussi partagent l'espoir et les ondes positives. On a créé, euh, on a créé un showroom, euh, un numéro vert disponible 24 sur 24, euh, euh, consacré à l'accompagnement psycholo psychologique des citoyens, euh, d'où euh, de son médecin psychiatre bénévole pour gérer les états de traumatisme et pour rassurer la population. Euh, à part ça, il y a un mouvement de, volontari de volontariat de, euh, de la part de jeunes euh, pour euh, aider la, les institutions euh, et le gouvernement pour combattre euh, le coronavirus. Merci. Merci. Thank you. Thank you. So I would like to summarize that. However, my French is non-existent. But the note taker, can... the note taker has asked, has sent you a message within the group because they would like you to um, either share it in English or. But there's there's a recording, so I think that will also be sent out. But thank you so much for your contribution, Awadev. And Mohammed would like to contribute. You may speak, Mohammed. Hello. Thank you, Karabo. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Oh my God. Hello? Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Karabo. Uh, thank you. Uh, okay. In my country, I will, uh, I will uh, inform you briefly what, uh, what are doing here in my uh, country. Uh, despite my country or uh, both uh, of uh, my government declared uh, to uh, uh, close the borders, oh my, I think, but, uh, but, and uh, suspending all the international flights, but, uh, but the on board of weapons and guns didn't stop. Uh, despite they declared the lockdown but the militias are excluded of this. Uh, the escalation of war has been increased more than last month. Uh, there is no signs of or uh, intentions to stop the war here at all, unfortunately, for uh, this news. But uh, uh, the people, here and the uh, vulnerable groups uh, suffering more than ever. Uh, um, when I uh, talk about the vulnerable groups, uh, I mean uh, uh, not only uh, the refugees, migrants, women, children, uh, uh, disabilities, uh, internal and displaced persons, uh, but but also we have the people will uh, like uh, without a fixed salary. So when the government uh, announced uh, or uh, declared uh, about to to uh, uh, close uh, everything, uh, declare up, uh, on the uh, uh, close the jobs, close the schools. So. We have the people without fixed salaries, so uh, they are the most vulnerable glo uh, groups. Uh, also, uh, the we have another problem here. Uh, when we are uh, say. Uh, Uh, stay stay home or uh, stay at home or uh, wash uh, wash your hands uh, problem with uh, uh, discrimination or practice that discriminate because not all the people have so uh, i'm here to think with you how we can uh, 
uh, we can uh, publish uh, some uh, slogan or some uh, words uh, without how to practice uh, the stigma or, disc or discrimination on uh, these uh, categories. Uh, also, we have uh, a big problem in the Africa countries. More than 60% uh, uh, of the Africa countries uh, suffering from the from the lack of water and sanitation. So when we are say, wash your hands, clean your hands. Uh, Okay, uh, not all the people can uh, reach to uh, water, uh, to the cl uh, clean water, and not all people can bathe the uh, alcohol or sanitizer, etc. Et so we have lots of challenges. So I hope together we we can think uh, together and make brainstorming to find a solution in this situation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mohammed. Um, you have definitely said some insightful things. You have actually pointed out an important thing to say, even in our intervention, even if we're having these interventions, they are somehow also giving rise to some other things or other issues. And that could be escalations of war and because people are now fighting for resources and marginalized or vulnerable groups are now also on the side and access to the relevant resources to protect yourself within this time frame are also scarce. So how then do we ensure that peace and security is maintained with the interventions we are taking? Thank you so much for that contribution. Um, are there any more contributions from North Africa? Okay, so then we would like to then move to the Southern African region. Um, since I have the opportunity, I'd like to start or use my chair benefits. Um, so I'm based in South Africa and we are currently going through a lockdown. I think this is day five, day, day five, yes. And we, it's a 21 day lockdown and it's been there's been a lot of fear. There's been a lot of misinformation being one of the biggest things. And um, there's also been a lot of people not actually taking this seriously. We had to go to extent of getting the military on board, having a lot of police presence to ensure that people are actually taking this lockdown seriously. But equally, we do have, um, our lockdown was quite strategic in that being like, Grocery stores are still open. Essential services are basically still open. Um, it's just if you're not working within the essential service space or you don't want to get, go get groceries, you need to be indoors. But that also presented issues surrounding homeless people, um, vulnerable groups in terms of access to the same things that Mohammed was speaking about in terms of sanitizers and clean water. And people also found that the lockdown would sway more to people who have the financial means to facilitate this because there are a lot of people who live from hand to mouth, people who actually need to be actively working to have the financial means to have food at home to facilitate this lockdown. But equally, one other thing we recognized was mental health, that within this time of lockdown, a lot of people then um, either mental health is compromised or people don't know what to do because we've seen that some people describe it even as sort of like prison because you are locked at home, you need to stay. So we found that there's little to help with dealing with mental health and maybe that's another thing that could be explored. That's from my side. And any other Southern African contributions?
any of them? Karabu, uh, uh, for the chairing and thank you for the colleagues for the previous um, uh, contribution. I've noticed today that West Africa is also fully uh, represented uh, with um, my, my fellow uh, Ayat, uh, Ayobayo, Ababade, and Jibora Dion from Senegal. So I will uh, start and potentially also uh, leave them a bit of floor as well to contribute uh, from their uh, respective uh, countries as well as complement any other happening around the um, uh, reach Africa region uh, so far with Sierra Leone having confirmed its first cases uh, today actually in the past few hours that means that all the ECOWAS countries have now have uh, affected uh, by uh, um, COVID. So the restrictions uh, range from minimal to um, severe with countries having some having closed their borders, some having suspended all flight commercials um, and some uh, still uh, maintaining um, uh, free movement of, of people to reflect uh, the uh, vulnerability of certain population groups, as uh, Mohammed um, mentioned earlier. Uh, so we also know there's a lot of countries in West Africa. Uh, some countries are landlocked, uh, such as the, you know, uh, Niger, Burkina, uh, Mali, and, and will be also be severely impacted being Sahel countries also fighting other wars on, 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 the, on, on the front. So the resources are likely to be very quite thinly um, stretched. Uh, so the innovative stuff that have been used as well includes uh, the translation of various um, guidelines from WHO, um, from the African Union um, CDC as well, to local uh, languages. We've seen a plethora of activists uh, rising up actually to be able to contribute and supplement um, those uh, public efforts of educating the population as well as uh, making sure the information uh, gets to work using through ICT um, uh, 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 technology. But the measures uh, in place so far have been heavily focused on urban and semi-urban areas. We've seen little awareness raising going to the rural, remote rural areas and obviously some areas areas such as the Lake Chad, Bison region, uh, Madrigal and other areas remain a sort of state control. So it's a very unclear at the moment what sort of measures are happening in, in, in those places where, pop, where population already um, to, to, to some extent a hostage by the violent uh, extremist group. So, but you also do not take in account the much less than the poor. And that's why we, we, we've seen with, uh, with a lot of the measures when it comes to self-isolation or confinement or reduced mo movement. The informal economy in this region is quite big. It ranges between 50 to about 80% uh, in, the, in, the, in the whole region. And it's a people that, that live largely of the uh, for, uh, uh, former se uh, 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 sector and, re uh, and rely on daily, um, you know, and daily um, subsistence or trade to actually be able to um, uh, uh, to survive. We've seen how detrimental uh, those cases were really in, in countries like uh, uh, India, and it's very likely that if adequate measures are not ta taken in West Africa region, we're likely going to see uh, this situation impoverishing the already poor uh, uh, people. In that slide, do have some good news, uh, such as the uh, Beninese uh, um, president, Patrick Talon, having announced that he will not advocate for, you know, this kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, invasive restriction restriction that will actually impact the ordinary uh, Beninese um, uh, we're, try, uh, we're trying to kind of uh, um, survive uh, from this uh, um, from this crisis but one thing one population group that is very left out of all of this are the refugee groups internally displaced the, uh, people uh, from Nigeria to um, uh, to 
Burkina Faso, uh, in the ECOWAS region, almost uh, the average of refugee or children displaced people, if you do the tabulation, range to a quarter of a million in each country, uh, at, at least if you, if, you, if you make the, the tally. So you have those groups who are already marginalized and already vulnerable within the already vulnerable groups. So we're going to be very much hit, um, hit very, um, and struck quite hard. But it's um, major. So far, we have not heard or seen that any refugee camps have been affected, but it's not a question of where it's going to happen, it's a question of when it can happen. And that's one of the areas where I feel that uh, our effort can start to draw attention to the plight of our and sisters in those camps and to the farm system that they're in because it's going to be devastatingly very um, high should, uh, should the virus uh, manage to enter uh, to um, those uh, uh, at those places. Uh, the WHO, as well as uh, um, some financial and technical partners of these countries have already a allocated a minimum of $15 million to the Sahelian country, to G5 Sahel uh, countries each. Uh, some measures also in, the, in discussion at the moment within ECOWAS uh, to raise from to, um, for different uh, 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 countries, but it's unclear at the moment what the strategy the different governments are using to kind of, uh, you know, I, 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 I address this. Thank you, Karabo. And very quickly, as well as I'm about to kind of uh, leave very shortly, so we'll not be here for the rest of this, this, this discussion. But some suggestion is to have some humanitarian uh, corridors, have, uh, you know, mobilize youth in those countries to, uh, you know, temporary recruitment linking up to the, to, to the funds uh, that, they, that have been globally available and also uh, use that to learn from the mistake, to live from, 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 from the mistakes of other, the likes of Italy. Do not wait until we have shortage of human resources to launch the recruitment can, can campaigns. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mokta. Um, and I guess you then take us into the most important thing, and that is for us to establish, um, you know, to establish and brainstorm on recommendations on a way forward. Um, you mentioned that, especially we're gonna start with communication and, and also mobilization. Um, so far there has been a mass translation into local languages. That is something that has been really helpful as Mark just stated, but also establishing humanitarian corridors and using statistics to learn about the trends that we should not actually do. Are there any other suggestions on how we can strengthen innovative communication tools, precisely between institutions and local communities, both online and offline, and also on how we can mobilize key role players to actually maximize on the work that they do? You are also welcome to type in within the chat room. Uh, Any contributions? Carabo, I believe uh, my uh, colleague from uh, Ayobayo and Dion Zipurajan are also online. I think that Abu Ayobayo wanted to add something. Okay. Ayobayo? Are you there? While we wait for him, please send in your recommendations on or just what you think we can do in terms of strengthening communication in innovative ways, but equally on how we can mobilize key role players within this particular um, space to manage the crisis.
any contributions because these are the things that would contribute to the actions um, that we would need to agree on in terms of what we need to do going forward. Okay, so we see that Tobias wanted to contribute, but it seems like his internet is acting up. Like I said, if you have any contributions and your internet is not, um, you know, cooperating, you're more than welcome to please type it in. Um, equally, you are more than welcome to also send it to us within the collective email or the collective group. We would like any and every contribution, please. But if your mic is working and you have something to contribute on the strengthening of communication and the mobilization of key role players, please do um, speak. Uh, so maybe I can add one more point, uh, if I may, Chair. Okay. Uh, so the, on the mobilization of, 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 of Kirill Paris, at the moment, the, um, the African countries, particularly in the West African region at the moment, are um, struggling to put up a, uh, to mount an effective response um, strategy. So we need to engage using our own kind of um, ideas and lesson learned and from the various places to not only engage with them both strategically, but as well as on every single affairs. Uh, we need to push them forward to advocate for them to, to, to develop, you know, an engagement strategy that we've seen with many uh, 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 countries. I cannot pinpoint any single African country in, in, in the West African region to the world publish how they will stage, how they see the staging or synchronizing the, the response to the uh, COVID uh, uh, pandemic. So this needs to become something they need to step up and, and come up to. The second response is that they also need to talk to the public and be much more accountable and transparent about how they're using uh, the funding provided by the WHO, the World, World Bank and various other me uh, mechanisms to respond to, uh, to this crisis. We see in the likes of Mali and Guinea and some of this funding we're used to contribute to you know, the preparations of, of, of the election, despite that uh, they're advising people not to go to, uh, to, st uh, to stay at home, but they are at the same time asking people to go to vote. Uh, so this was using how the kind of a tricks actually to make sure that the people who are in favor of their project come to, uh, to the fore. So we also need to be able to kind of engage with them on this plan and use this and make sure they use part of this fund funding to also engage with the youth Public. This is also an opportunity to create a temporary, uh, you know, uh, as I mentioned, a temporary uh, recruitment uh, for this youth to train them in, in, in the health hygiene and various and help them mobilize to take further the message, including many of those humanitarian corridors should not be become an option. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mokta. I would then also like to make a contribution. Um, so just based on what I've observed in South Africa for communication, South Africa has a free website for everybody to access. And that is the central website in which statistics are published, information about what you can do, what you can access, what are essential services, all the relevant contact details is there so that we avoid multiple, um, multiple platforms of communication and we just have a central um, legitimate point of information sharing but equally we have also used different platforms in terms of communication beyond just the website um, a lot of radio stations are, prior are prioritizing um, information sharing um, equally news in terms of tv uh, in terms of social media as well, we do have like central points, which would be our presidency, um, like Twitter pages, Facebook pages. So they put emphasis on central points as opposed to having um, multiple communication platforms because that could be confusing and we don't know which ones are legitimate and which ones are not. And equally, we, I think that one thing that could be used in, is a central communication point for the continent or equally for the regions or the country. Um, I think that there's a lot of activities going on in isolation and there's no uniform voice. And I think once we achieve a uniform voice, that's when things in terms of um, reducing fear, reducing a lot of uncertainty, reducing a lot of misinformation, because I spoke to 
um, Ayobaye about Nigeria and you're saying that there were people who were actually drinking things like bleach because they were told that that would be helpful. So to avoid such things, I think a centralized communication would work in terms of communication. That's for me. Any other contributions? Oui, um, thank you, Carabo. Um, merci beaucoup. Moi, je vais parler en français. I'll speak in, in, in French. Um, Zipora, from Senegal. Um, je voulais dire que peut-être que Batara, Mokhtar a parlé pour, pour l'Afrique de l'Ouest, même si chaque pays a été interpellé. C'est pourquoi je n'ai pas senti la nécessité d'intervenir uh, juste après son intervention, parce qu'il a parlé un peu de tout ce qui se passe dans la région, même si chaque pays a sa spécificité parce que le COVID touche les pays de manière différente et la manière de transmission, le mode de transmission peut différer d'un pays à un autre. Mais également, les modes, de, en tout cas, de riposte qui ont été mis en place sont différents d'un pays à un autre. Donc, par rapport à nous, euh, moi, je pense que ce que nous, on devrait faire, je ne vais pas revenir sur les chiffres, et puis, mais je pense que le Sénégal est l'un des pays de l'Afrique de l'Ouest qui, euh, qui est le plus touché par, par, par le virus. Euh, par le COVID-19 et un ensemble de mesures ont été prises euh, par le gouvernement, euh, mais également un appel à la citoyenneté avec un fonds qui est mis en place pour en tout cas faire face à, à, à ce, 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 cette pandémie. Et puis les jeunes, en tout cas, euh, par rapport à cela, euh, je pense que nous, ce qu'on devrait faire euh, au niveau euh, plus euh, au niveau international, mais aussi au niveau africain, je pense que la, la, la première chose serait par rapport aux propositions, de voir comment avoir une communication dense, en montrer en tout cas euh, que malgré euh, que nous sommes dans des pays peut-être qui peuvent différer et que les situations peuvent différer, nous avons une vision globale en tant que jeunes africains et en tant que euh, puce builders, comment faire en tout cas en tant que jeunes pour pouvoir nous mettre d'accord par rapport à certaines choses, surtout par rapport à la sensibilisation, parce que je pense que c'est c'est une réalité qui est africaine. Euh, dans dans l'ensemble des pays, peut-être que les gens ne prennent pas ça très au sérieux, comme le cas au Sénégal et dans les pays environnants, en tout cas. Euh, ils ne prennent pas, en tout cas, au sérieux. C'est pourquoi il faut toujours s'apesantir sur la sensibilisation. Mais également au niveau des États, par rapport au, au, aux fonds qui sont mis en place pour lutter contre, euh, contre cette pandémie, de faire en sorte que ces fonds soient utilisés de manière transparente pour que les populations puissent être plus enclines à participer. Mais également par rapport aux dons qui vont être fait parce qu'il va falloir un soutien en tout cas ici par rapport au confinement partiel. Nous savons que les populations, ils ont des problèmes économiques. Donc de faire en sorte de communiquer davantage que ce soit sur les médias sociaux, mais également une communication communautaire qui est plus difficile parce qu'il y a un contact qui est difficile. Mais de faire en sorte que nous, nous puissions s'adresser à nos gouvernants, mais également qu'on puisse voir dans quelle mesure nous pourrons en tout cas au niveau des communautés euh, appeler plus à la sensibilisation et la prise de conscience des risques par rapport à cette pandémie mais également de voir comment faire en sorte que les aides qui seront distribuées puissent être distribuées aux populations qui les méritent vraiment, c'est-à-dire les populations les plus vulnérables. Et nous, en tout cas, en tant que jeunes, nous avons déjà commencé ça ici au Sénégal, de faire en sorte qu'il y a un, un groupe de riposte qui est, euh, où il y a vraiment des jeunes et surtout des jeunes femmes. Mais nous avons également travaillé sur le cas des enfants talibés, c'est-à-dire des enfants qui sont dans la rue, de faire en sorte que, que ces enfants-là puissent retourner chez eux, profiter de cette pandémie-là pour faire en sorte que la prise en charge de ces enfants talibés puisse être prise en compte. Donc, en, en résumé, c'est un peu ça, de voir en, 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 ensemble comment on pourrait en tout cas communiquer davantage, aussi bien à l'endroit des populations qu'à l'endroit des gouvernements. Et peut-être créer un hashtag pour ça, voir comment en tout cas, par rapport à cette, cette pandémie-là, nous pouvons communiquer d'une manière, euh, manière coordonnée. Donc, je vous, je vous remercie. Thank you, Sofara. So, for the remaining... Um for the remaining time because we are running out of time and the call will automatically cut at the at the time in which it's supposed to end so i would then not be hi karabo hi so the time frames I'm hassan. are hassan the time frames are against us we would like to just wrap it up if anybody else has any contributions please type it within the chat itself but equally please then if when the chat ends then please type it in within the email the collective email or the whatsapp group i'm sorry to cut you guys however we need to make sure that by the end of this um, there's actually a way forward so we've taken note of all the suggestions made 
I wanted to know if the note taker is here because we would need them to sort of lay out everything so we can see if we agree on the actions. Is the note taker still here? Can the note taker speak and please summarize all the um, recommendations to us so that we can see if there are any we need to take out, if there are any we agree on, so that that can form our, our actions for this particular consultation. And I'd then like to recommend that the two representatives the two representatives for the African Youth and Civil Society Coronavirus Response Group then equally be voted for within the collective WhatsApp group because there are people who have asked to excuse themselves from this meeting because they had to leave early. But I think it would also be fair for everybody to collectively select those people. The note taker. Muhammad, do you want to step in? I, the main note taker is. Yes. 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 In terms of the Sorry, can I actions, move? can you please? In terms of the, so I'm asking if it is possible for the note taker to then take us through the actions that have been recommended, and equally, so we can see what we have so far, but what we can then agree on so that we actually have an action um, plan to, you know, lead what we would like to then contribute as peace ambassadors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Actually, I, uh, I, uh, I faced a problem, uh, some problem with uh, both of uh, French speakers and the second is with the uh, some people, uh, I can't, uh, I, uh, I couldn't hear everything when they are talking because maybe the, the poor internet uh, with me or with them. So, but uh, at uh, uh, all time, I'm, uh, I, I hear share the, link of can the, I summarize uh, what I have and then you add so Google of the Google Doc so okay so there has been a document that uh, a word document in which you can then add everything that you you know you've contributed and we can see that you know like Toby has added but to summarize everything, it's all been about um, translation to, to widen reach, um, establishing humanitarian corridors, um, the usage of statistics, establishing a central communication point, as opposed to having diverse um, communication platforms. Um, there was the contribution of, in terms of mobilization, and to use our own audience's youth strategically and push for engagement, but also have temporary recruitments to have effective um, reach. So I hope everybody is in fine with you, those contributions. Thank you, Karabu. Since we have less than a minute um, for this meeting to close, I just want to say a few words in, in closing. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for your excellent uh, moderation and for getting us to some action points. Um, I think I just wanted to highlight a few things moving forward as a support from uh, our side. Um, the AU is doing a lot of communication from podcasts to awareness cards um, to helplines. Um, so we just need to really, as youth ambassadors, share massively and disseminate on your social media platforms. Um, and then in terms of mapping out what's happening, I hear a lot of things that are already happening in different countries that are effective measures. And maybe we could help with 
crowdsourcing all of this information, whether it's government websites or youth-led initiatives, in one uh, web page where it's accessible as Africa source. Um, this is something we could also support and uh, happy also to support if you decide to host national virtual consultation that can bring more actors together on national level and you can do it in your longer language because I see also language um, uh, is also a challenge here and we need to, if we wanna reach more youth, we need to do it in different languages. So also happy to support in that um, sense if anyone would like to lead that. And then just to end, so, uh, I just wanna hope that you are all safe and your loved ones and that we will continue to play our parts and lead by example. And I hope also you you all take care of yourselves because um, we, we would need to be very vigilant in these times. So sending uh, my solidarity to all of you. Thank you so much, Ayash Nabi. Um, I don't know if it's automatically going to just cut us, but um, I can see that people are mentioning that they would still like to talk. Unfortunately, the time has run out. Um, thank you so much for those who have actually made contributions. I have actually taken screenshots of those to send to the note taker or to add to the document. And we'll select that person within the group as mentioned. And if you have any other contributions sent to the collective WhatsApp group or the collective email, we will take all your considerations. But as IHA we said, please keep safe. We send our solidarity and just keep healthy as well and keep sharing the relevant information that people actually need because your role is very much relevant, it's needed, and people out there are in need of youth engagement. Thank you.